Hi, and welcome to my front hall. You might be wondering why we're not starting in the shop, um, and there's a good reason for that. Most of the stuff I do out of my shop is furniture, but in this case, I'm actually gonna go off-roading a little bit, and this next project is going to be a screen door. I have an older house, it's over 100 years old, and it has some really interesting architectural elements. In particular, my front door here has a really unique pattern of panels at the bottom. We have this one long panel, followed by two smaller ones, and then another long one. There's another door that leads to the outside, just on the other side of this foyer, that's exactly the same. So, I need to build a screen door for my back porch, and I thought it would make a lot of sense to incorporate this theme or this design into the screen door. I also thought it might make sense to look at the materials around here. Now my floors, you can't see them, but are all quarter sawn white oak, uh, hand nailed. And I suspect that the woodwork and the doors are also quarter sawn white oak. So I'm gonna look to use that material in the door as well, and that's also gonna give me some structural advantages that I'll get into. But my first step is to get up to SketchUp and come up with a design for the screen door that will mimic the design on my front door. Here you can see the design that I came up with. Now, instead of having solid floating panels down at the bottom of the door, I'm gonna replace those with screen material. And then instead of the glass at the top, that will also be screened in as well. And you can see that I've mimicked the, the long panel, the two short panels, and then the long panel. And there are a couple of design elements here that are a little bit different from a traditional door because I'm not floating panels um, that would typically go into a channel that was routed into the door, but because I have to stretch screen over it, there are rabbits on this piece instead. And so the screen will get stretched over these rabbits, stapled in, and then I'll be able to just put some, some trim molding to hide the, uh, the staples and give it a nice finished look. Because I'm using these rabbits instead of kind of a floating panel construction method, creates a little bit of a design challenge. So I'm gonna zoom in here and show you what I mean. So rather than trying to cut all these rabbits stopped, that's gonna be pretty challenging, I decided to just cut through rabbits on all the components. And then what I've done is I've created a mating rabbit on the backs of all of the cross pieces. So if I slide this out, you can see that there's a rabbit cut in the back of this piece here. So that will just fit on top of here. And that'll actually give me a little bit extra long grain to long grain glue joint as well. But my plan is to use the Domino XL and actually use floating tenon joinery to hold all this together. And that's gonna make for a really, really strong screen door. So my next step is to go work on lumber selection. And then I can think about how to mill this to make sure that these really long pieces stay nice and flat. I went to my local lumber dealer and I found the straightest pieces of quarter sawn white oak that I could find. I was also really careful to make sure I picked pieces that were completely quarter sawn. A lot of times you'll find some that sort of goes from rift sawn to quarter sawn. Uh, the fully quarter sawn pieces give you that um, Ray Fleck pattern all the way across the board. The reason quarter sawn material is so stable is because of the way that wood moves seasonally the majority of the expansion and contraction in a piece of wood happens along the grain lines. So with a quarter sawn piece of stock, the seasonal movement would actually happen widthwise. So it'll be pretty minimal because it's a fairly small distance. Wood doesn't move nearly as much from tip to tip on quarter sawn wood like this. So this piece really won't expand and contract in this direction much seasonally, making it the ideal material for something like a door. One of the other reasons that people really like to use quarter sawn white oak is that it really has an interesting pattern that emerges once it's quarter sawn. If I zoom in here, you can really see those rays or what's called medullary rays. And it's something that you traditionally would see in arts and crafts or stickly furniture. And some people actually go to the extent of fuming the material, which actually enhances those medullary rays. For my case, I really just want this to match the quarter sawn white oak that I have in the interior of my house. So I'm not too concerned about really making those stand out, but I do want it to look consistent with the rest of the architecture. 
I also needed to find a piece that's really, really straight because I'm starting with five quarter stock and I wanna end up with about seven eighths inch thickness for my door. And if you have a piece that's at all bowed or twisted or cupped, by the time you plane it across the entire length of this, you know, seven or so feet, you end up with a half inch of stock and that's really not a good use of material. So I did find a piece that was really, really straight, quarter sawn throughout the entire width of the board. And I went and skip planed this and jointed it yesterday uh, just to kind of make sure I could source everything out of this one board and also to take sort of an even amount of stock off each side. And then I just let it sit in my shop overnight. Now that I'm sure that it's relatively stable and somewhat acclimated to my shop, I can go ahead and get this down to the final thickness. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mill the rest of my stock at the same time. That way I'll make sure that I have everything to the exact same dimensions. And then I can start laying out the components for my door. Lastly, I want to rip my really long board down the middle. We've all had cases where we've brought home a piece of wood, dimensioned it, ripped it, only to find that it bent apart or sprung out. Um, a lot of times that's a result of case hardening. So I do wanna do the final rip here and then let this kind of come to equilibrium before I do it to my final dimensions. That way I have a little bit of wiggle room in case this thing does move a little bit after I rip it. One of the big challenges with this door and working in a small shop is having enough room to maneuver the long pieces. So you can see that in the outfeed direction of my table saw, I actually incorporated a trap door into the design of my shop so that I can shoot the outfeed right through that trap door. And I'm, that's gonna come in really handy cutting a long piece like this. Even though this is a fairly long piece of stock, I do have uh, an infeed support back here. I have an outfeed support there, and then I have the window as well. So with any luck, I won't have too much trouble. Now let's take a look at how we did. Um, there is a little bit of spring in the middle, so you can see that, uh, or I guess reverse spring, you can see that there's a decent sized gap right here in the middle, and I have both the front and back touching. Um, but that's not gonna be a big problem. I'll be able to joint that no problem. I left this a little bit oversized, so I'll be able to get these down to final dimensions uh, without any trouble there. But more importantly, let's see if these things stayed reasonably flat. So I'm over at my bench here, which is, um, pretty much dead flat. And I've laid both pieces down on top of the bench surface and I'm really not seeing any light anywhere. Uh, I'm gonna flip it over. Seeing maybe a tiny, tiny bit of spring, maybe a 32nd of an inch here, but certainly nothing that's gonna cause me any challenges in being able to mill these to final dimensions. Again, because I've just opened up a lot of surface area on this board for more moisture to escape, I'm gonna let it sit in my shop for a little bit and make sure that it acclimates. And I should be good to then finally dimension these and they should stay nice and flat.